Okay, so the title of the video says everything. I want to thank you for 100,000 subscribers and as a gift show you a new transparent OLED display that you can use in your project. So first of all, thank you very much for watching my videos, but also for commenting, liking and sharing. That always helps and I really appreciate it. Second thing is this new transparent OLED display. And while it might not be new, I have actually seen it some time ago. Unfortunately, when you purchase this display, you will only get the screen, the actual display and this adapter board to convert the FFC cable, the flat flexible cable to the pins. But you cannot just connect those pins to your microcontroller because the display requires different voltages to operate properly. So you need an extra driver board like this one, which was designed by my friend Sean, who also has a YouTube channel called the SJM4306. And you should definitely check his channel because he has so many cool projects, like for example this clock called the filament time using those LED filaments. And I'm sure that at some point Sean will also share more details about this driver board that we made together. And I say together because you can see his logo and mine logo, but the truth is that I've only made the solder mask, everything else was done by Sean. Now to get those PCBs fabricated, I have used PCBWay, who is also a sponsor of today's video. And they have been actually sponsoring a lot of my videos almost from like day one, when I had like 100 subscribers and very little views. And so during those three or so years, I have used many of their services, obviously including PCB and PCB assembly, but also things like CNC machining or 3D printing. Now you can get this exact board from PCBWay, the link will be in the description. And if you decide to create your own PCB, you can use the link down in the description to get 10 PCBs for free, only paying for shipping. And I believe that until the end of September, you can get this nice violet color for the solder mask without any extra cost. So thank you PCBWay and let's get back to our project. And let me actually show you how to use those transparent OLED displays with the Arduino Uno. And I say displays because you might have noticed that there are a few different colors being the white, blue, yellow and green. And this is not the same display, those are different displays because this is the monochrome OLED display, meaning that it can only display one color. The display has the resolution of 128 by 128 pixels and it uses the SH1107 chip. And that's all great news, because I already have a project with the display that uses the very same chip, the SH1107, although this display is not transparent. And I have this clock project with this display, and I also have this compass project. And then I have a lot of videos with transparent OLED displays, actually that's just one display, that's the 128 by 64 pixel SSD 1306 blue transparent OLED display, and you can get this display with many different driver boards, but in the end it's still the same display. And one particular video that I have is this one called Thank You 400 Subscribers. And that one was published about three years ago. And I would like to update this project by of course adding three zeros to that number. And also using that new transparent display. And let's start with the compass project because down in the description there should be a link to the walkway project. Now walkway is a free online Arduino simulator and you can see that there is this SH1107 display but it looks kind of strange because this is using custom chip. But after recording this video this display was actually added into the walkway which is this one. So let's just start a new project by going into the walkway website and create a new project using the Arduino Uno. And in here let's add the display, so the SH1107. And that looks more like a display. And although there are many connections on top, this display could be only connected using the I2C connections, so those four connectors. And the ground should obviously go to ground. Then the VCC should go to 5 volts, so the 5 volt in here. And then the SDA, which is the serial data, should go to pin A4. And then the SCL, which is the serial clock, should go to pin A5. And let me also open the video for the thank you 400 subscribers because there should also be a link to the walkway code down here in the description. And I want to use that code but there are a few problems. Anyway let me just first copy this into our main code which is this one and let's talk about those problems. So the first problem is that this project is using U8G library and that's the old version of the library which was replaced by the U8G2 library. And unfortunately this library doesn't support this display, so we have to use that U8G2 library instead. So let's actually start with that, I will delete that line. And instead I will use that U8G2 library, so include that U8G2 library. 
and then inside the library manager I have to click the plus button and add that U8 G2 library into our project. And then back inside sketch we need a new initialization for the display so let's delete the old one and use that one instead for initializing that display. Again that's the SH1107 with the resolution of 128 by 128 pixels using the hardware I2C connection. And since we are calling this instance U8G2, and previously we were using the U8G1, just U8G, we need to replace all the U8G references with U8G2. And let's replace all. And one thing that's different in the U8G2 compared to U8G1 is that we need to include the begin function inside the setup. So let's just copy this begin function into the setup function before anything else. And then I think that we can start the simulation and see what kind of problems we will be facing. And as expected, there is a problem. It says that there is no draw bitmap p function in the U8G2 library. And if we open the documentation, indeed there is no draw bitmap p function, only the draw bitmap function. And if we open that function, it says that this function should not be used anymore. It just, you know, from the U8G1 library. But that a different function, the draw xbmp function, requires those images which are up here to be in a slightly different format. And since I don't want to re export those, I think that what we can do is we can use the draw bitmap function instead of the draw bitmap p function. And really the only difference between those two functions is the letter p, which stands for the program memory. So those images are being stored inside the flash, inside the program memory to save the memory inside the RAM because the program memory is bigger. It's 32 kilobytes for the Arduino Uno compared to just 2 kilobytes for the RAM. But since our images are very small, those are the images for those fireworks. I think that we can use the draw bitmap function without the P. And then for the images, we just move them outside the program memory by deleting this program word from those. So let me just do that for all the images. And there should be one more image down here. So this should also not be inside the program memory. And then try to run the simulation one more time. And we can finally see the sketch running on this bigger display. And of course, since this was designed for the 128 by 64 pixel display, we are not using the bottom half of the display. So I just change that. In here, when we are setting the random Y position for those fireworks, let's go all the way to 128. And then also let's move my logo all the way to the bottom. And I think that we need to do it one more time in here for the Y position. And then let's try to run it one more time. And now the fireworks should be animated over the entire display, but we haven't done anything with those labels. And we can of course edit the strings of those labels and move them around using the X and Y positions. But I would like to use a different tool to speed things up a little bit. And that tool is called Lopaka. In here let's start by creating a new project and of course call it thank you for 100k subscribers. And the platform will be our U8 G2 library. And the screen size in this case is 128 by 128 pixels. And let's create that project. And the advantage of designing it this way is that we can immediately see the result. If I click the string button, I can add the string and change it to be thank you for. And maybe go with some bigger font, for example, pro font 15 or maybe pro font 17. And then we can center align it like so and just create a new label. And that will be 100,000. And one more label and that will be subscribers. And let's maybe make this 100,000 slightly bigger. So for example, using this 22 instead, or maybe even going all the way to Pro Fund 29 and make it center aligned for both the X and Y and align those R ones as well. And just like that, we have our labels placed where we want them to be. So we can just scroll down and copy this piece of code for drawing those labels. So just copy this into the clipboard and paste it in our project. And instead of drawing those old labels, let's just draw those new labels. And restart the simulation one more time. And I think that we have our final design that I would like to run on the transparent OLED display. So we can just copy the code into the clipboard, then create a new sketch inside the Arduino IDE and paste the code in here. 
And if you have never used the U8G2 library, you have to go to libraries and type in U8G2 and install the library. But even with the U8G2 library installed, we cannot upload the code to the Arduino Uno just yet. And that's because in the beginning, I've said that the Walkway project, the Walkway simulation, only supports the i square c connection of the display, while our transparent OLED display only supports the SPI connection. So we have to open the U8G2 documentation one more time, and let's go to the main page, because there should be a link for all those initializers, so let's just click this link. And then let's search for SH1107. And we are looking for the one with the 128 by 128 pixel resolution. And we want to use the hardware SPI connection and there are three different versions. This letter F means the full screen buffer, which means that for the 128 by 128 pixel resolution, we need that many bits or this many bytes, so we need two kilobytes. And since the Arduino Uno has only 2 kilobytes of RAM, it wouldn't be possible to fit anything else, so we cannot use that one. So we have to use the either number 1 or number 2, which is the page mode, and in this mode the display is divided into multiple pages, and we only need a buffer in the size of those pages. So let's just try to copy this initialization, and paste it in our sketch. And we want to call this U8G2, and the rotation will be the U8G2R0. And then to connect the display to the Arduino, we need to connect quite a few different wires. For that reason, let's open the pinout diagram for the Arduino Uno. And the SPI connection is this light blue color. So let's just zoom in a little bit. And show both at the same time. And the first pin is the SCK, so the serial clock pin. We can also call it CL for clock. And that should be connected to pin number 13. Then we have the pin number 12, and that's the data coming from the display back into the Arduino Uno. And since the display is not sending any data, we don't actually need to connect that pin, but we need to connect the pin number 11, which is called the COPI, sometimes called also the data pin or the MOSI pin. And that's basically the data pin coming from the Arduino Uno into the display, so that's the pin number 11. And then we have the SS pin, or sometimes called the CS pin, that's for chip select. And that's saying to which SPI device is the Arduino Uno sending the data, so that's the pin number 10. And then we have a few more wires which could be connected to any Arduino pins. So the CS, we have already said that the CS pin will be connected to pin number 10. So the CS will be connected to pin number 10. But the DC pin, so the DC stands for the data command. Switching between the data and comments, we can connect this wire to any Arduino digital pin. So let's for example use this pin, the pin number 9. So the DC, the data comment, will be connected to pin number 9. And then we have one more pin, which is the reset pin. And some displays might not have this wire, but our display does. So the RS, the reset pin, we can connect it to for example pin number 8. So the reset will be pin number 8. Obviously we need the power, so we need the 5V to be connected to also 5V. And then we need the ground to connect to ground. And let's not forget about the semicolon. And I think that's all that is needed. So let's just connect the Arduino Uno to the PC using the USB cable. And in here select Tools Board and select the Arduino Uno Board. And select the correct communication port. And then try to upload it to the Arduino Uno Board. Now the sketch is uploaded, and just in case, I will disconnect the Arduino Uno from the USB cable, and connect the driver board for the display, so the G should go to ground, the V plus should go to the 5 volts, then the CL, the clock, should go to pin number 13, the data pin should go to pin number 11, then we have the reset pin that should go to pin number 8, the DC, the data comment pin, should go to pin number 9, and finally the CS, the chip select, should go to the pin number 10. I will also connect the OLED display itself, and then connect the Arduino Uno to the USB cable to the power supply. And we do see our design on the OLED display, but it's kind of offset. And that's because the used chip, the SH1107 chip, could be configured in many different ways. And we were using some generic initialization, but we can try to use a different one to see if that helps. 
So back to the UADG2 documentation, instead of using this generic initialization, we can for example use this Pimor Omni one. Again, we will go with the hardware SPI connection, so just copy this piece of code into the clipboard. And then inside the Arduino sketch, let's try to use that one instead. And let me just copy this piece of code like so. And then try to upload it to the Arduino Uno one more time. And with that change, now the design looks perfect, there is no offset on the OLED display. And that's pretty much it for today. So again, thank you very much for 100,000 subscribers. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down in the comment section. I still plan to record a video where I will showcase some of your projects that will be hopefully out soon. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.